After arrest and before trial comes jail. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Another I'm going into my eighth year working at uh, Jefferson County Correctional Facility. Before that, I was a substitute teacher for a local school district. Uh, I like structure, so this suits me perfectly. Have a seat, thank you. This one we get for y'all. And so, what you bring Brian in for today? Got a uh, county warrant, tell ID. Yeah, it was, uh, disturbance over a cell phone when everybody been drinking. And when I ran him, he had a county warrant. Seems a little hot. A little bit. Yeah. He said he's had a little bit too much drink. Bit drink. Well, hopefully it all will pan out fine. All of them had too much drink, which is why they had a disturbance. So yeah. you know how that goes. I hear it. Go that way. I'm not going to do nothing. Get up. You're, You're not going to get up on your own? You know what suicidal. I said? Get up and walk on your suicidal, own, man. man. All you got to do is just walk. I'm not suicidal. OK. You're talking to the wrong person. Now you just had to answer that man question. Whatever happened out there, we don't have no control over none of that. Take everything off. Why well, I'm going in the green suit again? Because you, you, you didn't answer the paramedic questions the way you were supposed to. What did I not answer correctly? Open your mouth. Lift your arms up. Lift your arms up. Lift your sack up. Turn around, squat and cough. Bend your knees. Step back over there. <laughs> Take a step back, sir. You're not, gonna, you're not gonna listen? See, that's I what I'm saying. All you gotta do is follow the instructions. Take back. a step back. You right. I ain't doing that alone, bro. I never said you did, sir. Okay, make a left. Walk straight out the boot. They don't put me in green. They ain't put me in green every other time. I just keep telling you when you talk to that paramedic again. All right, Brian. You say you want to use the phone, huh? Yeah, I want to use the phone first, please. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Look, talk to Officer Wolf right here behind the desk. He gonna let you go know what your charges is and then let you go ahead and use the phone, okay? Appreciate you. No problem, man. They charged you with failure to ID. You got a $2,500 bond. Phone down there, dialed your number, nine first, and then your number. Appreciate you. All right. Bitch, I ain't calling my mama. I don't know her number. She left me when I was 13, huh? All right. Hey, David, can you come? Can you come get me? Bro, I'm trying to be responsible. David, please come get me from jail in Jefferson County. All right, bro. Thank you. Over oh. here. Thank you, bro. So I get my orange jumpsuit and go. What? Because only sight can clear you now. Can I call them back to see if I'm a bond out? No. It's one of them. One of. Listen. Listen. And book in. Listen. Don't come let me out this green suit. No, I didn't sir. Do nothing to get this green listen suit. to Sergeant Nathan. You're not listening. You're not listening. Yes, I am. Wanna, excuse me? Yes, I am. I didn't do nothing to get in this green suit. Yes, sir. On your screening, sir, the paramedic talked to you. We've already told you this. If you remain combative, though, we're going to have to chain you up. We're going to have to restrain you. But why were you banging on the door? Don't, don't knock on the glass. Don't you do can. that. You can't no. knock on the glass. No. But that's but you can't knock on that glass. No. It's gonna cause you to get restrained on that bench. And we don't wanna have to do that, but you don't gotta knock. You're not trying to hear. I'm gonna advise you to remain calm. Don't beat in the window. Okay. Exactly. Have a good day now. All right. I answered every question. Okay. George is false. Sarge, what is my charge again? I've already told you failure to ID. Now, why am I still in this green suit? For what reason? We all Don't do that, sir. We've already warned you, sir. It, it appears that you're going to be a problem. When he asked me if I'm suicidal, I said I don't want no easy way out. Sir, it is a precaution. Stay still. What? You I said so. All you got to do is listen. Make me sound a baby. So for his own safety, we're going to have to place him uh, in restraints before yeah, he harm himself. 
She ain't wrong. I miss my son. I ain't heard him since he was 15 days old, his birthday on 11 1. Well, sir, you already in jail. We've Number already one. talked you to you. Me? No, sir, you're not hearing me. I am hearing you. I'm just not paying attention. I'm okay. disobeying so you. Well, all right. Deliberately. This, this is the result of you disobeying. disobeying you. And I apologize, Well, so much. but this is the result. What, but I'm tired of this. It's all I'm on you. You're trying, goddamn me. No, I've been sir. on probation for four years and ain't did a bitch ass thing wrong, you heard me? Sir. Sir. You're not it's following instructions. And I'm not even trying to hurt them, you dig? I already told several people in this facility that I love them, actually. Okay. Right or right. My fiance's birthday tomorrow, you talking about Monday, I'm gonna get out, you heard me? I ain't do nothing to nobody inside this place. Tell them quit bending my wrist. Am I hurting them? You have had plenty warnings to stop. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Veely now. Took a man long, y'all. You need to calm down now. Oh, I'm calm. Brian came in on a warrant. Brian was pretty upset. And because of his uh, answers to our screening questions, Brian has to be housed in a single cell. And he's going to be in that situation until he's seen by our psych team or until he bonds out. I was born in Southeast Texas. I'm real proud of the history that we have here. We have a lot of entertainers that were born here, a lot of sports figures that were born here. Uh, I love being in a small community. I don't see myself being anywhere else but Southeast Texas. Man, the man that you chose to save my soul again. I got on love to share. You ain't gonna give her no backup. Oh, uh, I can't say this, you know. Like, by the way, this is my best friend. Y'all got locked up next to me. I thought y'all were married. Uh, we're going to be. Oh yeah. I know her husband though. Her husband's a cool guy. Her, her husband said it was okay. <laughs> that should tell you something if the husband's giving you <laughs> his like, wife. Get rid of that should speak volumes. I love it. <laughs> Why are they bringing you to jail today? Uh, I was standing there for the last time. For the last time for what? Trying to get uh, her car out of impound. You said y'all are married? No, we're not married yet. But she's already married? Yes, sir. It gets better. My wife, well, I'm still married to for six and a half years. With my brother now. Because so. with your brother now? Yeah, with my son, yeah. Take her. Are they happy? I hope so, but it's not my problem anymore. So now you, you do realize by the way you answer those questions, you're going on suicide watch. Right? Oh, yeah, I'm fine with that. Why? Why do you want to go on suicide watch? Because sometimes that makes me feel special, man. I like the attention. OK, ladies, she's all yours. Well, look, man, sign right here for me. All right. How many times have you been to jail? Two, three times total. I'm oh, just that good. 27, sir. 27? I know we'll go this way. All right. Melissa, why are you here today? Because my dad did die. He just died in July. And I got his car. So last time I came in here, my car went to the impound. And it's been there ever since. And I'm just trying to get my dad's car back. It's the only thing I have of my dad. I've just been trying to get my dad's car. Well, Melissa, you know panhandling is illegal. I'm out here trying to do better. I sympathize with you, but you know more, more money. Okay. Where did that come from? Her socks? Come right here. That is great. Oh, no. stuffed in my boob. Yeah, we don't want booby money. Oh, come on. No. No. So oh. your husband is OK with you marrying another man? Yeah, he's so OK with it. So why did you bring us here? Uh, I passed through an intersection a couple hours ago, and uh, he was out there soliciting with cardboard signs. So I told him, hey, I've never seen you before. It's your fair warning. You know, you're not supposed to be doing that here on the streets of Port Arthur. So I left, went on about my business. Mm -hmm. A couple hours later, driving by, and I uh, see his female counterpart out there. So I stop and talk to her. She tries to hide her sign. So I get her, and then he sees me, and he takes off with his sign. So I call him over, and uh, I just tell him, what are you doing? He's like, uh, I'm still out here. He pulls his sign out, and I'm like, man, you got to go. I, 
I told you straight up, man to man, don't come out here. You're still back out here with your female, so now yeah, let's get off the road. Let's go to jail. I don't know why they didn't understand, but they do now. I don't like this town. <laughs> I really don't. But I mean, how much money did y'all make? Y'all made like well, almost. We make on average three hundred dollars a day. Good grief. At least. But you don't get tired of that lifestyle, not knowing where your next meal's no, gonna it's come exciting. from. Really? Exciting. I've tried to be, you know, like normal, hold a job. That's boring. Routine? No. Not for me. You live a hard life, man. I've had a hard life my entire life. My mom and dad died when I was 13. Really? How did no. your parents pass away? Car wreck. Car wreck? How long have you been doing drugs? Oh, man. Uh, 14 years old. So, like, do you have anxiety? Is that why you go there? Terrible anxiety. The only person I'm really honestly hurting is myself. Right. Yeah. And you don't and see anything wrong with that? Not at all. How can wow. you love her if you don't even love yourself? You got to be know what love is to be able to love yourself. You got to be have somebody to truly show you love. And the only person who's ever done that, that is the person I came in here with. I'm glad that's, like, the happiest thing in your life, but I don't see how your lifestyle doesn't give you anxiety, because it gives me anxiety just listening to yeah, the way you have your life set up. It's weird, huh? When everything is chaotic around me, mm -hmm. I'm very calm, and I'm able to solve everything as I go opposite. along. All right. Good Bye. luck to you, David. All right, thank you. All right. They are the oddest couple that I have ever met. The way that they live life, it seems like it's working for them and they're happy. Hopefully, they could do it the legal way and we don't have to see them in here again. What you drink today, buddy? You won't blow for us. We try to get him blow with the PVC. Um, hold on, hold on. Mark, how, how much Mark. you drink today? Four shots. Four shots. Okay. Will you do a PBT for me so I know how much uh, uh, alcohol you've taken in? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. I love to put a. Who's got the PBT on him? I love to put a little stay on this motherfucker over here. Okay. Hey, Michael, how about you and I just visit real quick and uh, when, it, when nah, you... No, the way he here, acted towards me. I'm going to hang tight because I want to see... No, the way he acted towards me. And we're just going to go hey, from there. That way we have... I have rights. rights. I have rights. Hey, hey Michael, like it's just us now. I have it's rights. No, no, it. the way he acted towards me... Hey, don't, don't worry about it. No, nah. hey, Michael. No, nah, I do not appreciate the way I was being arrested. I know what I've done wrong. I do not appreciate the way he done me. Okay. Hey, Michael, do you have anything in your pockets? I want to have a condom in my goddamn wallet because I was talking about getting a piece of ass, but other than that, there ain't nothing against me. I got you. I ain't mad at you for that. I know, no, no, no. What well, pocket's that condom in? Hey, it's safety first, right, yes. motherfucker? Yes, sir. Yeah. Don't need no babies running around there. All right, I'm going to take this belt, OK? Better tell me you love me first. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> All right, we're good. All right, let's mosey on in here. Now, we're going to encounter these two Armel Police Department guys, but uh, don't worry about them. You're going to be messing with us for now, OK? I'm going to lie No, 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 you're good. Michael, you got any tongue piercings or anything like that? Anything fancy? No, but I wish I wouldn't like them. Hey. Right now. Relax, dude. Relax. OK? Hey, no. Hey, it's all done with Just him, the okay? way he talked to me, I would hey, love Michael. to with that oh, ass hey. right now. Hey, let's get your shoes off. Go ahead and kick your left I foot out. I do not want to get tased or anything, no, but sir. I would love to with hey, that not, not his ass. I don't want to have to tase it's you. Because he wanted to say some racist <laughs> because my son's had Mexican. OK, is this, a, is this a Guinness me. harp on your neck? See the fizz. I was just asking. Well, yes. It is? You ever been to Ireland? I'm Irish. Are you? My son's had Mexican. It's OK. That's why I'm going. He talked racist. You know, is what I went off on. I got you. Relax, Michael. Man, you're tensing up on us, buddy. You know, because he talked about race. All right, hop to your feet there, bub. <laughs> All right. All right, let's get to it. Talk about my race again. I got your name. All right. That's f Yeah. All right, Michael, let's stand here for a minute. You said earlier you'd only had about four shots. 
Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Michael, what I need you to do is lean down to this uh, food slot right here. Place your hands out for me, sir. All right, sir. I appreciate your cooperation. Here we go. All the way out there, Michael. Thank you, Michael. We'll have them off here just in a jiff. Hopefully, it's the last time, Michael. Whew. All right, I appreciate your cooperation, man. All righty. Guys, how'd y'all come in contact with Michael? We got a call from one of the neighbors saying he was going up to cars fighting with him okay. and arguing with him through the car. So the caller left and just gave us the last known location. While we're driving over there, we get flagged down again by another person pointing him out. So we go up and approach him on our front porch. It's not his front porch. Even the neighbors are like, we don't know who the guy is. Yeah. So we go and start talking to him. He's drunk. He's cussing. He's yelling. There's kids around. So we go ahead and put handcuffs on him, and he kind of pulls away from us a little bit. So we hook him up, and then, man, he just starts yelling, cussing. He was not very happy with you guys. Yeah, calling me a racist, saying I was arresting him because he's white. I think the, the humidity, the heat, and the alcohol got to his head tonight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's not real happy. No. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thanks. you. Uh -huh. Like, what was the reason for you getting arrested? I guess drunk and disorderly conduct, and probably. I don't know. You didn't fight with him or nothing, right? He beats me. Be an overnighter, I guess. Yeah, what's going to happen, though, is you were just charged with that public intoxication. You'll see a judge in the morning time. Um, and uh, you'll get out maybe sometime in the afternoon. See you, all right, man. Just have a seat for me. All right. Appreciate you. When it comes to working with people under the influence, it's not the easiest thing to do. We're going to get him a, a bed, somewhere to sleep for the night. Hopefully, he'll be better in the morning. Coming in, and uh, they have a female that is agitated with them and may become an aggressive, so we're going to go out there and assist with them. I'm going to take some property off of you, and then we'll take your handcuffs that's, off. All that's right. my wall shirt, and never gets unclipped. Just make sure you don't have anything else in your pocket. Hell no. What do you think I am, stupid? Goodness, no. She told me uh, out there. No. On scene, it was total uh, I was assault. Sitting there. Yeah, it was. Total actually. assault, and I don't. We, I don't know if we have that charge or not, but... Well, whatever. You're going to be working at McDonald's. I told her, you know, if they raised the minimum wage, that wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, you know, 10 McDonald's bucks an bill. hour, you can quit. And that wallet is so old. Could you please we, put it back in your hand? They're going to they're gonna take real good care of your property, OK? Ma'am, so. I really want you to assume control. OK, we are in one second. You assume control, woman. OK. I am going to deal Would with you one second, Would you please get okay? his hands off of me? I think we're almost done. Oh, who the f is we? All right. I think that's everything out of the pockets. Let's right. walk this way, OK? I'm going to let you chill out for a little while. We'll go from there, OK? Uh, you, oh, no. All right, go on in for me. I'm going to open this. You want the cops off, OK? Right Turn Do you around. want them off? Thank you, ma'am. Hold on. All right, go ahead. All right, thanks, man. We got called on a disorderly conduct. Mm -hmm. Three different people pointed her out as the aggressor. You can, you could obviously tell that that was the case. Uh, she was highly intoxicated. We put her up against the wall with the crystal pistol because she kept wanting to try to walk off. That way we could search her, see what she had on her. Miscellaneous trinkets, stuff like that, and then a pretty big screwdriver. Oh, really? <laughs> so. Uh, Typical homeless stuff. Right. And Lisa, will you send on that red line for me, please? I'm going to ask you a bunch of stuff, OK? Have you ever been treated for asthma, heart trouble, hypertension? I am not answering medical questions to a police officer. I'm not a police officer. I'm a correction officer. The only reason I'm asking is to make sure you stay safe. What? Don't. Stay safe? If you need help, officer, help. If you need help, I need I can help, help to be safe from you guys. I don't have to answer those questions. You are absolutely right, Lisa. We're going to go ahead and go back in that tank. And when you're ready to cooperate, we'll move from there. OK, I'll finish answering your questions. Are you sure? OK, let's do that. What are some major uh, medical issues that I need to know about? It's all physical. And there's nothing you can do about it. All right, Lisa, if you'll have a seat on that stool for me, please. Do you know what you got arrested for? 
No good goddamn reason. Got arrested for a public intoxication charge, OK? Well, he, no, I wasn't even intoxicated because I had just cracked it and then he had like two sips, was dead sober. I am not intoxicated right now. You're still in jail for public intoxication, though. Fine. I'm going to get you changed out and uh, get you to a bed, OK? OK, that's And you have good. any questions for me? No. All right, go ahead and have a seat. Let me see the judge today. If she stays around Amarillo, I can see her being a frequent flyer. She was talking about moving to Arizona. We'll see what happens to her. After arrest and before trial comes jail. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. I was born and raised here in Amarillo. I'm actually the sixth generation member of my family to be in law enforcement. It's what I know, it's what I love, so I'm excited about where I'm at and, and where I'm going. APD's coming in with the mail. We'll see what he's got. You have any tattoos? A couple of them. What do you got? Uh, well, we'll start at the lower. We'll left knee, two skulls. Uh, We'll go with the uh, member. We'll say uh, name. Where at? Hey, it's right on the man. You know, it's right on the other side of it. Yeah, has your name on it? Not my name. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a girl's name. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> What's going on? You have warrants? No, on view traffic. He had a shotgun on him, so oh. tucked in the back of his coat. So we rest him on traffic. We step up here, man. What's your name? Mark. And you said you had a shotgun on your person in your coat? Mm hmm. Yeah. Just carrying it around? No, nah, I found it in McDonald's parking lot. We were over across from McDonald's. You found Burger it? Burger King? Yeah, I was laying it back there in the parking lot with a couple shotgun shells, a couple keys. Huh. I'm going to leave it there for some little kid to pick it up, man. I mean, that's, you know? that's a good point. That's very noble of that you. My, that my girlfriend's in jail right now, so. I... Is she here? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Who is she? Shayna. Oh, OK, OK. <laughs> she's she's pretty frequent flyer, huh? <laughs> OK. If you get a chance to get over there, you know, tell her uh, Mark said hi, and I love her. And I, got, and I got a letter going out to her. I'll see what I can do. I guess y'all can write each other once y'all are in here, huh? I'm only gonna hopefully going to be here for, like, maybe a day. All right, man, just have a seat. I'll call you back over in a second, all right? Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the hospitality. Yes, sir. So how'd you find Mark? I was patrolling North Polk. It's real dark over there and closed businesses. Yeah. I saw him riding on the roadway. Uh, he didn't have a light on his bicycle. Oh, he's on his bike? Mm -hmm. So I pulled him over, was talking to him for a little bit, patted him down for weapons, and he had a shotgun That's tucked in, yeah, tucked into his coat. Yeah, he had a little makeshift pocket. And he said he found it? That's he, what told he told me. He told me he found it. If you want to come outside, I'll show you a shotgun. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to see it. This is Cody was wearing? Yeah, this was a Cody was wearing, true. Coat and, coat and shorts and a yeah. t-shirt. It's kind of weird, huh? We couldn't see it when we first pulled the motors since it's so yeah. heavy. But this is the shotgun that he had. We cleared it. It, God, it had five in it. First one right here was a uh, buckshot. But he had it tucked in here. That fits really well for just finding the shotgun and mm -hmm in a parking lot, huh? I asked him if he had any weapons on him, and he said he didn't. Uh, yeah. And then, of course, on the pat down, we could feel the barrel. What'd he say barrel. about it? Is that when the story came out that he found He it? said he had just found it. So it's one in the morning? Mm hmm Nothing good can come from that. At least he's here tonight. He'll be here for the rest of the night. And, all right, take it easy. All right, you too. So if you could, tell, tell me again, you found you found the shotgun, right? I was riding the highway coming up, you know, from the valley, right, right. right there where the Burger King is. I'm coming through the parking lot, and laying right there in the ground, man. Just caught your eye. There's a shotgun, you know, a couple shells, a couple right. keys. Right. There's some chains laying there. Okay. So I mean, my girlfriend's in jail. I'm trying to bond her out. So you just had to scoop up the chains, scoop I mean, up the shotgun. You know, so cut my cut my coat. You know, stuff down in my coat. You know, because okay. I don't want to be riding on it with all my handlebars, you know? Okay. And 
Of course, I mean, it wasn't the smart. I mean, I didn't even check and see if it was loaded or nothing, man. I checked the chamber, made sure the chamber was clear, you know, but I, mean, I knew it was 12 gauge. I knew that right off the bat, yeah. you know. He told me, he asked if you had a weapon on you. He said no. That's uh, the reason I didn't want to tell him is, is I didn't know how the law was in the state of Texas as far as carrying a concealed weapon. So you didn't want to get in trouble for having it? I didn't. Okay. I didn't. Okay. You know, I, feel, I didn't even know I was going to get in trouble at all. I right. mean, you know, he stopped me, and I was like, why'd you stop me? And he's like, well, because you had the flashlight, but it wasn't on, and it's not fixed to your bike. And I'm like, yeah. well, I didn't even know that was, I didn't even know that yeah, was. Yeah, you got you to have a headlight for your bike, you know, especially, and, especially at night. But yeah, I wasn't trying to hurt nobody. I wasn't I'm trying to do no damage with it, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. I was honestly going to take it over to my buddy's house and be like, here, man, you know, if you can sell this, sell it, you know? Mm -hmm. Give me some cash, profit. get your girl out. Give me right? the money, get her out of jail, you know? She's got a $500 bond right now, so I mean, you know, that's what I'm trying to do. Of course, now I have to, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now the process is a little longer. My mom's going to be pissed. <laughs> All right, man, go ahead and walk over here. I'll take your fingerprints real quick, OK? Obviously, if you don't get bonded out, then you will have to stay here tonight. We'll get you changed out. Oh, we'll yeah. send you to the back, all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, if, if they, they run that and it comes back all clean and everything, do I get to keep it? The shotgun? Yeah. Being that you found it, it was never really yours. Well, I, well I mean, possession is nine-tenths of the law, right? Well, it was in my possession, so I mean. Still, you didn't, you didn't purchase it. Why not? Why is it serious? I mean, uh, you know, if it didn't do no harm, no. No harm, no foul, right? Nah, I don't know if it works like that. <laughs> but just have a seat. I'll finish up your paperwork. Then you can make some phone calls, and we'll go on from there, OK? That was good. Well, I'm really not sure if uh, Mark's story adds up, even though he couldn't be charged with the gun. At least we got a loaded gun off the streets. Whatever his intentions were tonight, they didn't get carried out. Step up here for me. Right over here to the window for me. What's your first name? David. So David. why are you dressed as a clown? It's just having fun for Halloween. Like, but it's not Halloween yet. It's the month. It's the spirit. You know, there's been a lot of issues with clowns in the news here lately? No, sir. So you hadn't watched the news where people are dressed as clowns and chasing after people? No, I, I know, but that wasn't my motive, you know? My motive was just walking around. You got clothes on under there? Yes, sir. You don't have any pockets with, like, rags tied together or chickens or nothing like that? <laughs> Maybe in this one. No, Maybe I don't. Back. <laughs> Did y'all get a call on this guy? Yeah, he was over at uh, Walmart running at people in the parking lot. He was also up there at uh, Firehouse doing the same thing. So they called back in on him at Walmart. And then we get over to Walmart, and he's sitting there next to a shopping cart all breathing hard. He's got some warrants. Well, a little mask. Nice. So I guess he wanted to get in on the Facebook trend. There was a guy in the parking lot that said he was about to run him over because he thought he was getting attacked. So, hey, you know you live in Texas, right? Yes, sir. Lots of guns. Yes, sir. Be careful. Hey, David, if you'll hop on up here for me. Go ahead and spread your feet for me. It's no laughing matter, either. I need to take a couple pictures of you. So if you go step back over there by that wall okay. and uh, take your mask and your hat. Yes, sir. Put it on for me. You know, if we get any more calls on him, we have our we have our visit that's been documented. We have pictures of him. So if we get any more suspicious calls or maybe potentially robberies with somebody matching this description, we have something to go back and look at in our database. Feet together, that's fine. It, it looks just good, man. Arms on by your side. I need your mask and also your little hat. If you take your shoes and socks off, turn your socks inside out and just hang on to them, okay? Thank you, sir. Take your right index finger, roll across that bat a couple times. Let's get this press hard and roll once across that box. Yep, yeah, that's it. All right, David, good luck to you. Just step on through those doors, and uh, they'll get you taken care of. Put your hands on that wall for me, man. This if, wall? Yep, that black square right there. So you're just running up down the street just trying to get into the spirit of Halloween. Yes, sir. I got you. You just bought that uh, costume today? <laughs> yes, sir. 
Well, hours ago, the city of Amarillo said no clowning around tonight. <laughs> And you got a new Halloween costume. You'll be out before Halloween. Right. You got any fancy piercings or anything like that on your man? You know, we can laugh at this with all the clown hysteria that's going on, but it's the police's job to keep the public safe, and then our job, once the inmates come through here, to keep them safe. Grab your shoes and socks, David, and you'll come over here and just take a seat, OK? Yes, They'll start getting you booked in. We're in the middle of shift change. I mean, I'm not trying to, like, put people in harm's way, you know? You got you to gotta be careful, man. This is Texas. I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody's going to have a gun. <laughs> you know what I mean? Your friends were pretty adamant about getting you out, so I don't think that'll be a problem. Like I said, once they get here, pay you out. 15 minutes, I can get you out of here. Cool. You got other friends that dress up like clowns and are going to start walking around, or have they already been walking around? They've already been around. OK. I so, just joined the movement. Oh, you're joining? <laughs> so it's a movement. It's just friends from the Hunter house. All right, if you'll go over here and stand on the red line by my computer, we'll finish up. All right, man. See the sign right there? We'll get you some phone calls and see what your friends say, OK? All right. Thanks, man. What up? Check it out. I'm in here because of warrants, my dumbass, speeding tickets. There's no bell, like, no nothing. It's, it's tickets I have to pay. Five hundred and sixty-five dollars. Five sixty-five. It's five sixty-five. Yeah. I don't know. If y'all get me out, I'm gonna pay y'all back, like somehow, like or pay the loan, whatever y'all get. Figure it out, man. Figure it out. All right. Bye. They're, they're gonna try to um, get me out like by the morning. Okay. We'll go ahead and change you out in just a little bit, yeah. and we're gonna have to house you with some other inmates then. Okay. Right. Hey, Deputy Brush. Yeah. You can go ahead and uh, take him down to be housed. Yeah, I can. Okay. You can just head this way, man. David probably should have took care of his tickets before he decided to dress into a clown costume and draw attention to himself. If his friends can't come up with the bail and get him out, he's probably going to be sitting here for a little over a week or so. Hopefully, in the future, he'll learn from his mistakes and take care of his business before he has any fun. employed with Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office for seven years. My title here is a detention deputy. We process people in. I've lived in Texas over 20 years. I am a military brat, so I lived all over the world. But Texas is my home. What are you bringing them in for? Narcotics. Narcotics? Turn around, right face the wall. Right here, face the wall. They're both in the same case? Yes. yes. OK. Were they supposed to be kept separate, or? All the way on the wall. Put all right, feet. I'm going to pat you down. Okay, go. Any jewelry or piercings? One. That's it? Let me watch. You don't have anything else on you're not supposed to have? No. Thank you. Cool. You go straight through that doorway, you're going to make a right turn. Yeah. Sorry, Alex. Sorry. Sorry. From this point on, no more communication between the both of you. OK, make this the last time you speak to him. Do you understand? Do you understand? Yes, OK. All right, we're going back this way and to the right. What are you here for? Updated something about what I'm being charged with yet, sir. So you have no idea why you're here? One of the reasons is marijuana. OK. Why do you think you're here? Because my boyfriend's in trouble. And I was in the house. There's nothing I could do about that, you know? Like, I just, I literally just got home from work from being sent home from having severe morning sickness. Mm -hmm. I get sick from 7 in the morning until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So y'all are going to be dealing with that tomorrow morning. OK. And how many months are you? Two. Two months? And you, how old are you? You said 20? Okay. Well, I found out a couple weeks ago. And I have an ultrasound in the morning. We don't know what you're charged with. I don't know if it's a felony. But because you were with him, you know, the state of Texas says you're doing the same thing he's doing. You know what's really weird is I cleaned out my purse yesterday. I literally dumped it upside down, threw everything away, and reorganized everything. And they told me they found weed in my purse. Isn't that very weird? And I've literally only been to work. And I had it with me at work. Like, you think, like, that would smell. You think someone at my work would say something. I worked for a world-renowned chef. It's so relaxed. I think they put something in there. There is no weed in my purse. Like, that's really stupid. Go ahead, step in there. We'll get you later. Well, what'd you bring them in for? 
Uh, we had a complaint from the apartment complex about some individuals that were selling uh, THC wax, the oil, and uh, into vape it and stuff. So we initiated a narcotics investigation, and uh, throughout our investigation, we identified the individuals and uh, got the search warrant written up and uh, hit the apartment today. Because she said she had cleaned out her purse and she thinks someone planted marijuana in her purse. Um, well, you know, you know better than I do. We, yes. don't, we don't do that. She was talking more than he was. He was our main target. And they're both getting the same there. charge? Yeah, both main charge, the same charge. Charges are on here. And they're both looking at felonies or just one felony uh, charge? One felony each and then uh, Mr. Minnie. All right. All right, find out your charges. We had two charges. We have a manufacturer and delivery of a controlled substance, and it is a felony. We only had, like, half an ounce in there. I really wish they would weigh it out in front of me, because there's not a single way in there. was two to four ounces. Well, that's what they're charging. There's no that's way a misdemeanor. In so with the felony, I believe you won't have a bond, so you will be staying the night with us tonight. They're right. dumb if they said it's two to four ounces. That's what they're they saying. really are. They're dumbasses. They're obviously like really crooked cops in this case. Just so you know. What are y'all doing with drugs, man, when your girlfriend's pregnant? Hmm? Uh, I just had a little bit of weed, you know? A little bit? I don't say a little bit. Y'all trying to bring a baby into the world with, with drugs? Is that what you want? We just found out. OK, but you didn't no. do nothing about it, and now you're in jail. Like, we were planning on quitting and stuff. Like are you dealing, or are you using? Or are you using. Can't have that, man, when you got kids in, in the picture, you know? Alex and Avery were brought in by our undercover narcotics. Alex, she's typical what we see here. We have a couple, and the girls are all in love with these young men, and then they get in trouble and get caught up behind these men. And unfortunately, she believes the police are the bad guys. She believes they're picking on her. But this is what I see all the time, and I think it's very sad. I've been here for seven years and nine months now. I work in the IPU, currently do intake, uh, all the incoming of inmates coming in. Uh, we have new people coming in, we have old people coming in. Familiar faces, new faces. You got anything else on you, man? No, oh, sir. That's what he told me. Okay. You got any more drugs on you? No. If you do, you need to let me know now. Because if no, you go with it, I'm, I'm, but I'm asking you. Yeah, yeah. All right, if I find anything else, that's going to be a felony charge added to whatever you're being charged with, all right? All right. Lift your right leg up back towards me. Yeah, Hand me your shoes. All right, put those on. Come on this way first. We'll put them on. Okay. Yeah. Take a right. Take a seat on the second bench for me. I stopped him for a no front license plate. And the first thing I noticed is he had a, a grinder and a pipe, a smoking pipe in the center console, and he had his window rolled down and just overwhelming odor of marijuana coming out of his vehicle, man. He was like, man, I can't have this in my vehicle. I was like, no, you can't have that in your vehicle, man. So he was, he was like, kind of verbal with you? <laughs> he was kind of being a smart ass. Oh, yeah. So I patted him down. I found it, pulled a bag full of marijuana, hooked him up real quick, searched the rest of the vehicle. The trunk pulled out another backpack. It was a mason jar full of marijuana about one and a half grams of uh, ecstasy and three uh, three handguns, all 40 caliber uh, weapons, uh, full magazines. And they were in the trunk or? In the trunk, yeah. Oh, okay. He had about $1,200 cash on him, too. No excuses or anything? No, he said that since he's been 17 years old, he's been smoking marijuana every single day. He said now he smoked about four blunts a day. He said in the past he'd smoked about 14 blunts a day. He's looking at a... Uh, Two, possibly three felonies, and a Class A misdemeanor. Okay, so he'll be here overnight. He won't have no bonds. So he'll be here See for them a while. tomorrow morning, and they'll let him know what he don't know. Yes, sir. All right, I appreciate it. Thank yes, you for your time. Yes, sir, you have any other yes, questions? Sir. Come ask. Yes, sir, Woody. So what you here for, man? Uh, a possession of marijuana and um, three three guns. Were well, you selling stuff or what? Nah, I smoke you, it daily. You, you smoke daily? I smoke what else did you have on you? I had ecstasies I knew about. I don't, I don't sell tabs either. I don't sell ASOs. I don't pop ASOs. Where all the money come from? I don't do nothing. I just, I work. And how old are you? 21. You game affiliated with anybody? No game. No what you game relation. Huh? What are you doing with all the weed? I'm telling you, I smoke. I smoke daily. 
I smoke all the time. What do you have all the weapons on you for? Protection, just in case. I got shot, uh, I got shot this year, so you know, I just needed some protection on me. From what, though? You got somebody looking for you? People trying to get me. They just shot me already. I guess I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Right, you're 21. You got a long future ahead of you, so hopefully you make the right decisions now, all right? All right, come on, let's look at your process now. Right. He's gonna be charged with uh, four counts. I believe they're all state jail felonies. Uh, he's got possession of controlled substance, uh, possession of marijuana. He's also got delivery of marijuana, and then the unlawful carrying a weapon. This is not his first involvement in felony, so hopefully he can change his life around and go on to a better path from here. I've been thinking about my home, I've been thinking about my kids, I don't want to be alone.